Hey, welcome here. This is episode 64 of Vision is Better, and today I want to make a suggestion about how to choose your gear. And then I'll wrap it up and give you some thoughts on gear I use right now. Then I'm going to drink tequila. In fact, I may drink tequila all the way through the podcast. I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. Okay, so the first thing I need to say is that this has a chance of sounding so opinionated and elitist, and I hate it when articles put forward this idea that there are two kinds of photographers out there, the kind that blah, 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 and then there's the kind I am, and you know which one is being put forward as the right choice. Two kinds of photographers. What a load of crap. There are a million kinds of photographers out there, and none of them fit into a tidy box, nor should they. But there do seem to be two prevailing ways to choose our gear, and I know them both as an insider because I've been there. I have used both kinds of decision-making process, and like an addict, I can tell you which one gives the best high. That is a terrible metaphor. Okay, so option one on choosing gear is like this. New thing, Thing Mark III comes out, and Thing Mark III is amazing. And people that know about these things are saying how much better Thing the Third is than Thing the Second, and suddenly we need Thing Mark III. We need it. We do. All you have to do is open Lightroom, look at the last two years of photographs, all of them made with Thing Mark II, and if we're really honest, we see flaws in them. We do. We see noise. We see a vacuum of goodness that only Thing Mark III can fill. But see, the decision-making process here has way more to do with thing than with need. And I'm about to show my cynical side because it seems like new thing comes out at just about the same time when the photographers that bought old thing, Thing Mark II, hit the wall of realization that is this. Thing Mark II is not making my photographs better. It's just not. Yes, it might have made my life a little easier for a while, but the photographs, they look a lot like the ones we made with the original Thing, Thing Mark I, just before we realized we were wrong, that it wasn't Thing I uh, that was the magic bullet that was going to make everything better. And when we hit that wall of disappointment, Thing Mark II came out. And then when we hit it again, Thing Mark III comes out. And that's one way to choose gear and one way to go bankrupt. Decisions that revolve around new things because things are new are not usually decisions that are well made. That does not mean you should not buy the new thing. Like I said, some advances do make life easier. It's just that gear lust and the tyranny of the new are not the best way forward. The more people I work with, the more photographers I talk to who are doing great work, interesting work. They're making incredible photographs and a lot of photographs. They have a different way of choosing gear. They make 100,000 or more photographs a year. They know what they need. They know the camera only does so much, no matter how good the camera is, and they know what their role is in making photographs. And their decision-making process goes something like this. I need to do this specific kind of work. And to do this kind of work, I need this specific functionality or this specific feature or capability that I don't currently have. I need 50 megapixels for the kind of output I'm doing for this project. I need speed or a certain look that might justify a medium format camera. I need to fulfill my vision and I have hit the absolute limits on the gear I have. I know this because I've tried and I can't do it. I don't need thing or Thing Mark II, or Thing Mark III. I need what Thing can do. And if it's one thing, one brand of Thing, or another, that's fine. I just need the tool that will get it done. They don't need to impress you with their shiny new thing. They'd rather show up and do their art. And if you're going to be impressed, they would rather you be impressed by their photographs. They aren't precious about this because it's only a tool, and they're not easily seduced. So how do you know if you should buy Thing Mark III? Here's my criteria. One, does it offer, legitimately offer, an advantage to you and to the art you make that the previous gear didn't offer? And was this, this is important, was this a need you felt before that new piece of gear was announced? Only you know what you need. For some, it's a specific look or build quality. For some, it's size and weight. Figure out what you actually need to do the work you can't not do, the work you want to do, have to, must do, and what do you need to do that, and what do you not 
need. When we fall more in love with the work we're doing than with the tools, I think we're in a really great place. Two, can you afford it? Listen, spend your money the way you want, but unless you put a cap on this conversation in your own mind, uh, when you ask what's the best camera right now, you're looking at a span of like a thousand to fifty thousand dollars that you could spend to answer that question. All creativity happens within constraints. If you know what yours are, you will be better equipped to make a good decision. Three, read a handful of reviews, but take them with a grain of salt. In fact, forget that. Take them with the whole friggin' salt shaker. Reviews can be such a waste of time. They, the same camera or piece of gear can have incredibly polarized opinions and reviews. One of this camera is amazing. This camera sucks. And everyone's talking shit about their gear and the, the, the new thing, whatever it is, or they're praising it like a fanboy. What few people talk about in reviews, and this is why I don't encourage you to go to too many reviews, is uh, they're, they're very rarely framing it like this. I needed a tool that did this, and this particular camera or lens did it really well with the pot, you know, the following caveats or exceptions, or I need my tool to do this and this new thing didn't do it. End of story. That's all that matters. Did it or didn't it do what you needed it to do? Number four, once you decide that you do in fact need this new lens or camera or whatever to do this, this, and this, then get it in your hands. Actually pick it up, play with it, feel it, see how it feels, see whether you like using it, see if you can use it uh, quickly, whether your muscle memory kicks in or whether it's just a frustration from, be from beginning to end. Play with it. Does it feel right? Test it, rent it, borrow it if you have doubts. For me, this is what I care about. Does it do what I need it to do and does it get out of the way as quickly as possible? That will be different for you than it is for me. It's why I prefer the feel of Fuji instead of Sony as an example. I prefer Nikon over Canon because of the ergonomics and the way that they fit in my hand and the way that their menus work and where their buttons are. They work better for me. Uh, they both, they all make amazing cameras with more functions than I will ever use. They are absolute modern day miracles. I just want one that does what I need it to do without jumping around yelling, look at me and getting in the way. I just want to make photographs. So for the work I do now, and this is part of my decision making process, I know that I want a 24 megapixel sensor. I don't need anything bigger, although my underwater gear has a bigger sensor. I didn't choose it for that. For me, full frame is no longer important. It used to be. It used to be that if I wanted to use the wider angle lenses, and I do, I needed a full frame uh, DSLR to do that. But the uh, mirrorless revolution has come so far. The crop sensor uh, offerings are so much more robust now. Uh, so full frame is not as important to me. It used to be. Um, the analog is important to me. The analog feel, the buttons, the dials. I much prefer to have buttons and dials, uh, you know, an aperture ring that spins than I do to have uh, menu items that I have to scroll through. And I, I like just to be able to twist things. That's my preference. It won't be yours. So get it in your hands and, and figure out what you like. Figure out what you need. Um, why not get the biggest sensor you can? Well, maybe that's a consideration, but uh, for me, at the risk of using a tool that doesn't feel right to me, I don't think so. All right. A couple more things. If all of this is just kind of going over your head and you're thinking, I thought he promised tequila, then <clears throat> this conversation isn't for you and you can just grab your tequila and we'll have a drink together. If you don't know what you need, then for now, when you're asking, what camera should I buy? Pick anything. Every camera is amazing right now and I'm gonna get shit for this, but every camera is amazing. It does far more now uh, than what the masters of the last hundred years ever had access to, ever. So no matter what you pick, it's going to be good. Pick something simple and use it for two years. Don't worry, thing number four is coming out anyways. Just wait for that. But in the meantime, you will gain a better sense of what your needs are. Better still, borrow a lot of cameras. Get your hands on Sony and Fuji and Canon and Nikon. Play with them. Don't listen to what other people are saying. See what you like. See if it meets your needs. Make a lot of photographs. And in two years, 
when you've had all of that experience, ask yourself, what now do I really need? Do I need anything more than what I have? The next one's gonna come out and it's gonna be twice as many megapixels. Do you need that? Do you care? What tools do you like in your hand? Which ones allow you to do your thing without it getting in the way? And what can you afford? But for now, it's like the cat in Alice in Wonderland. Alice says, which road should I take? And the cat says, well, where are you going? Alice says, I don't know. The cat's response is perfect. He says, then it doesn't matter which road you take. Some of us are so concerned about which particular piece of gear we buy that we are missing the point. And uh, we're spending more time researching these cameras than we are on, uh, than we are spending on actually making photographs. Second thing, I told you I was gonna open my camera bag to you, so to speak. I have three systems on the go right now. My primary cameras are two Fuji X-T2 bodies and uh, some zoom lenses. And uh, here's why I love them. I love them for the following reasons. Uh, one, they're light. Now remember, I came from shooting uh, pro-size DSLR gear. It was heavy and uh, I was shooting with, uh, with constant aperture lenses, big, heavy, you know, and, uh, and big primes like the 85 1.2. And those are beautiful lenses, beautiful gear. It's wonderful stuff. But six years ago, I had an accident. I shattered both my feet. I now have mobility issues and uh, my choices come from my needs. So these are light, they're versatile. They have uh, flip out screens. Uh, which because of my uh, mobility issues are really valuable. So I very often have my flip out screen in this position and I can get really low. I can get down on the street. I can lie down um, or get the camera down on the street without having to lie down. And the quality, the image quality on these cameras is fantastic and the price is amazing. I can buy several of these for the price that I could buy my old DSLR stuff. and. Uh, they're, they're weatherproof. They do everything I need to do, but they're super light. I can pull the battery pack off and go even lighter. And I love these, uh, these cheaper zooms. This is the 10 to 24 millimeter, uh, F4. And I, I used to, I mean, the thought of an F4 lens would drive me crazy. You know, I wanted the F2, but the fact is, um, the high ISO stuff is getting so good that I don't mind cranking up a couple f-stops in terms of my ISO and losing it in the lens. If the lens is lighter, if I can walk longer, if I can shoot harder, um, I'm fine with that. I don't need the really shallow depth of field. I don't need the bokeh. My photographs don't really have bokeh. They have just lots of out-of-focus bits. But I'm allowing my choice of moment, my composition, I'm allowing other things now to carry the photograph, not how good my bokeh looks. Are my photographs getting better because they're made with Fuji? I don't think so, except that they don't get in the way and that's huge for me. So my lenses are a 10 to 24 millimeter, which is roughly a 16 to 35 millimeter equivalent for a full frame. Um, I use a kit lens. This is the least sexy lens ever. This is uh, roughly a, uh, uh, what is this? This is roughly like a 24 to 80 equivalent and it's a shifting aperture from a 2.8 to f4. This is a great little lens. I just sent it in to get repaired after scratching it up. I've told people for years that I don't use skylight or UV filters because I never scratch my lenses. I just scratched my first one, um, but one in the last 12 years is not much. I have a 55 to 200, uh, mm, uh, 3.5 to 4.8. This is an 80 to 300 millimeter equivalent. Look at this, look how tiny this thing is. It's, it's wee, it's like, it's little. Um, I love this and again, I don't need the 2.8. If I do need the 2.8, uh, and I use this only for wildlife. I have two fantastic lenses here. This is the uh, Fuji's 50 to 140. Um, you know I'm not bent out of shape about sharpness. It's not something I'm you know chasing, but this is a sharp friggin' lens. It's incredible. This is uh, roughly a 75 to 210 millimeter equivalent on a full frame, constant aperture of, of 2.8. I don't travel with this one. It's just too heavy. It's just, it's bigger than I wanna carry. I would rather just slink around with this uh, on the back streets of India than carry this thing, which is big and heavy, beautiful. So I use this for wildlife. The other one that I have is 
Fuji's uh, 100 to 400. This is roughly the size of my old Nikon 70 to 200 f 2.8, and it is the equivalent of a 200 to 600 millimeter, uh, capping out at like 5.6. Uh, what is it? 4.5 on the short end, 5.6 on the long end, 600 millimeters at 5.6 handheld. The optical stabilization on this is phenomenal. I love this lens. Doesn't do as well with a teleconverter, but um, this is a kick-ass lens. I can go to saf on safari in Africa with all of this gear in a bag that I can carry easily. It slides into any safari plane. It slides into any international uh, overhead bin and I still have room for all of my other stuff. So I carry two bodies and I carry, depending on the trip I'm doing, that selection of lenses. My favorite, if I had to pick one, would be this one, the 10 to 24. This is a beautiful lens. It's all bashed up and chipped and uh, I'm surprised I haven't had to take this one in for, uh, for repairs. If you have questions about, uh, about why I choose any of this gear, leave it in the comments. Of course, I also shoot Nikon underwater. I have two D800 bodies. One I bought as a uh, backup and bought it used. I'm a big fan of used gear if you just need a backup. Uh, Fuji is, just isn't there yet for underwater work and the housings aren't either or they weren't when I was investing in my underwater gear. Sorry, Fuji. My last two cameras purchased are uh, two Canon 70D bodies uh, for video and vlogging. They're just better than anything else that, uh, that I've found and because they're a generation behind, I got them cheap. I could have bought the ADD, I could have figured out how to use some of my other cameras, but these are the ones that are getting the best reviews for vlogging and for video. And as if you've watched the Vision is Better show for a while, you know I used to have some, um, some uh, focus issues. I need another drink. I used to have focus issues and then I went to the iPhone. That wasn't totally ideal. Now this just locks focus. It does a beautiful job. Don't be that photographer that spends more time researching camera specs than making photographs or studying the actual craft. Third thing, I promised tequila, which is, of course, what I'm drinking now, again. Mm. And I'm not, I know what you're thinking. I'm not drinking it for me. I'm drinking it for you to make this last point because that's the kind of guy I, I don't, it's only like, it's only seven o'clock in the morning anyway. I'm, I'm kidding. But here's my point. I choose my camera gear like I choose my tequila or my whiskey. I don't get sucked in by pointless conversations about which one is best because there is no such thing as best. The best at what? What's important to you? What do you need it to do? What do you want it not to do? How much do you want to spend on it? And what are your preferences? That's all that matters. This is a Casamigos, Casamigos Reposada. This was George Clooney's personal project, or it was until uh, a couple of weeks ago when they sold it for several billion dollars. Didn't even ask me, because um, that's the kind of guy George is. It's, uh, it's smooth and kind of butterscotchy. I prefer it to most tequilas, uh, especially the cheaper tequilas. But again, it, it depends what you want. If I were making margaritas, I would use something else in much the same way that sometimes an iPhone is absolutely the best camera for the job, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a D800 or a Fuji or a Sony. Only you know what the best camera is. There's no more best camera any more than a, there is a best wine, a best tequila, or a best whiskey. Also, by including this tequila in the show, it becomes a prop, a prop I needed to make my point. Ipso facto, it becomes a tax write-off. Did I need a whole episode to make a case for common sense? I don't know, maybe. I, there's just, there's so much noise out there about which gear is the best, and I think we can ask better questions. Skip an upgrade cycle or two. Look, just buy whatever the hell you want. You're going to anyways, no matter what I say. But if these ideas help you make a better decision, I will be glad to have helped. Focus on your need, not on the new shiny thing. There are so many voices telling you that the lens you bought last year, remember that one? It was amazing. It was the money lens. It was the money lens. Remember that? And now all those voices are telling you the new one is better. The old one sucks and that's why your images aren't nearly as good as you wish, but the new one's out. No, your images aren't as good as you wish because you have high standards and you're just not there yet, but you're getting there. 
If we want to get there faster and if we want to make really great images, better images, if you really want to spend your money on something that'll make your images better, faster, then spend that money on opportunities to make more photographs. Spend it on travel, spend it on studio time, pay a model, maybe do a workshop, buy a printer and print your work, buy a shelf of photography books, not how-to books, books of actual photographs. Study them, learn from them. They will make a bigger difference than Thing Mark III, Mark IV, Mark V will ever make and they will last longer. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, if cameras don't make better photographs, what does? The answer is better photographers. And are you in luck? Because I just wrote a book called The Soul of the Camera, The Photographer's Place in Picture Making. And it talks all about this very thing. There's a lot less tequila, though there was tequila involved in the writing. And you can get it on Amazon or wherever fine books are sold. Check it out at soulofthecamera.com. And if you already have a copy and you love it and you wanna share the love, would you do me a favor and leave a review on Amazon? Those reviews help authors and people that wanna buy the book so much. Thank you. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this show, hit the like button on your way out. Be sure to subscribe.